Hello, I'm Luca Torx and welcome to my Spain faction guide for Rome Total War. Today we're going to be having a look at some of the Spanish units, the buildings and just some general campaign strategy and advice for this campaign. Now as you can see, Spain is uh, not a playable, in quotation marks, faction in the game but it can be unlocked if you edit the data files, it's pretty easy to do. And Spain start off with, guess what, in the region of Spain, minus, they own all these settlements in Spain apart from one in the middle that belongs to Gaul which we'll see in a second and one down here which belongs to Carthage. So they are, they're located in what is modern day Spain but they don't have the whole peninsula to themselves so that's quite interesting. And um, Spain is a faction described as good mix of fanatic barbarians and organised infantry with some cavalry support. And they, I do quite like the Spanish inf infantry, sorry. I think it's quite an interesting campaign. And I think it's one of the more fun barbarian campaigns in terms of the actual units available. That's my personal opinion. And that is exactly what we're going to be having a look at first, the Spanish units that are available. So let's have a look. So, peasants. Obviously, you know, peasants are peasants. They're not great. Poor morale. The same as usual. Nothing particularly special there. Next up, town militia. Now, town militia are spearmen, but honestly, they're not even effective against cavalry. They're about as bad spearmen as you can get. An attack of only three and a defense of seven. These guys have a poor morale. And I'm not joking, these guys really do have a poor morale. If you've played as Carthage, which I have recently in a campaign, you'll realize that these guys aren't that good. And they just break really easily. They're a tiny step up from the peasants, but honestly, nothing much. If you compare them to sort of the town watch, the Romans, it's, they're relatively similar. Don't rate them at all. Only get them if you're really desperate. Now, Iberian infantry are quite a step up. They haven't got good morale, but they haven't got poor morale either, so they're kind of in the middle. And a defense of 8 is okay, an attack of 7 is okay. They're relatively unremarkable, but at least they won't break straight away like the town militia. So that's an advantage, I suppose. Scutarii, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but these guys are sort of the equivalent of Weletes, I suppose, but they're more buffed up, they're better in the melee, and they're decent in defense. And these make, this, that makes these guys pretty decent, I would say. They have a missile attack of 13, which I think is pretty good. And an attack and defense of 9 and 12 respectively, which means they can fight in the melee if they're required to. I quite like these guys. I think as skirmishers, skirmishing infantry goes, that aren't archers, these are pretty damn solid. I quite like them indeed. Naked fanatics, these guys are interesting. Um, they have a good morale because they are fanatics indeed. They have good stamina and all of that. They are a bit disorderly, but they're naked fanatics. What do you expect? Obviously, they don't have any armor, which, you know, is a negative of them, but they are... Relatively strongly attack with a 13 attack and a 7 defense. They're okay, they can do a good job, and they're quite good if you want to have troops that boost morale. And, you know, they won't break quickly. So, yeah, pretty decent troops, but vulnerable to stuff like arrows because they haven't got that armor rating. Bull Warriors, this is a step up. So, these guys are infantry. They are attack 13, defense of 12. Excellent morale, so they're solid troops. And a missile attack of 17 is really really solid i like these guys a lot bull warriors are good this is as good an infantry as spain get i sort of compare them a bit to i suppose um praetorian cohort i'm not saying they're as good as praetorian cohort they're not but they're sort of the same sort of thing in terms of they have the short range missile the equivalent of the pelum and they can fight in the melee but obviously they're no praetorians i'm under no illusion of that slingers don't rate slingers personally but you know, I find them a bit slow and stuff. As I say, they're fast moving, but I mean slow in terms of the actual missile attack. And their missile attack's only four, and they're not that great in the melee. So slingers are a little bit weak. And I say if Spain has one weakness, it's definitely in terms of the, the old missile attack. Because they haven't got archers, as you can see. They haven't got archers. So they haven't really got any long-range missiles. They really rely on good solid infantry and good cavalry. So, you know, something to consider if you want to play as Spain. They're not as good on the old missile front. Same goes for skirmishers, they have a slightly better missile attack, basically the same melee attack and defense. They're fast moving, they're okay, but nothing particularly special, I would say. Warhounds are the same as usual. I like warhounds just to sort of lower the enemy morale and to chase off enemies, but they're a bit disorganized, they're not that great. But some people will like them, I'm sure. I prefer just proper cavalry myself. And talking about proper cavalry, Ground Shield Cavalry, I wouldn't really call these proper cavalry, they're sort of a light cavalry. Um, they are used to, as it says here, pursue fleeing enemies and ride down skirmishers, and that is the truth. They are fast moving, and that is their only real asset, is that they can chase off people that are annoying you, like javelin men that are skirmishing around you, 
and if the, en the enemy army is rousing, they can catch them up pretty quickly. That is what round shield cavalry are used for, but they haven't really got any other purpose. If you get them to charge into a solid infantry unit, they'll break, or they'll just die straight away. They're not that great. Next up, long shield cavalry. These guys are a bit better. They have good morale, so it means they can fight a bit more in a longer fight. Defense of 13 means they're decent. Attack of six with charge, but uh, sorry, attack of eight with a charge bonus of six is pretty good as well. But again, they're more fast-moving cavalry. The, the Spanish cavalry is better light cavalry, I'd say. It's more light orientated. And again, it says they're used to pursue fleeing foes and drive off skirmishes, but they have more of a use in other ways because of that good morale particularly. Next up, General's Bodyguard. This is the pre-Marion General's Bodyguard. Pretty solid unit, good morale, good stamina. Attack of 11, Defense 14. It's what you expect for a general. It's a solid unit. They're not amazing. The post marion general is better because of the defense is better, and I believe they have an extra. No, they don't have an extra hit point. So, but very, very well armored means they're better defensively generally. So, you know what you would expect of a heavy general, they're good. And onagers, the Spanish and all the barbarian factions really, they don't have that much in terms of siege equipment. But onagers, onagers will do the job most of the time. Maybe against an epic stone wall they'll struggle. You might have to bring multiple or have some other tactic. But against normal buildings, bear in mind you won't be facing that many high level buildings really if you're Spain because you're going to be fighting barbarians mostly. You should be fine with just onagers. And then finally, Balearic Slingers. Um, they're basically the same as the these Slingers, I think. They're slightly better in the melee with a slightly better missile attack as well. So that's pretty decent and they have good morale. So Balearic Slingers are alright. So we've now, had a, a, we've now had a look at the units. We're now going to have a look at the campaign map and strategy i'll show you the quick video the introduction video for the faction it's a generic rebel one i believe because spain isn't a proper faction that can be played but i'll show it to you anyway just in case you're interested before my grandfather's grandfather was born this was our land these are good places our gods live here, in the trees and rivers. They watch over us. We are happy. We hunt. We love. We have families, homes, a good life. But sometimes we must fight. The Romans disturb the gods. They burn the forests. They take what is ours, wives, children, land. And the Romans talk of how they will help us and protect us. They put us to sleep with golden promises. When we wake, all we had is gone, stolen. They take our sons and turn them into little Romans. Ah! So we fight to keep what is ours. What must stay ours? There can be no peace. No peace with Romans, men of stone and iron and lies. There can be only war. Alright, so here we are. This is the Spanish starting position. And as I said, they have four settlements sort of around the edge of Spain. So that's relatively interesting. And as I said, there's a a settlement of Gaul here and a settlement of Carthage here. Now what I'll do is I'll turn off the fog of war just so you can see what's going on. Obviously I wouldn't normally play the game like that but just so you can see where the other settlements are and where everyone is in relation to Spain I will turn off the fog of war. So now we can see a little bit more clearly and as I said Numantia is owned by the Gauls and Cordoba is owned by the Carthaginians. But first of all we'll have a look at what Spain actually have themselves and then we'll focus on strategy. So First up, in Asturica, up here, Spanish capital. Um, there's no army outside of it, as far as I can see. But inside the city, they have a small garrison of the faction leader, two Scutarii, which I reckon are pretty decent, two round shield cavalry, and some skirmishes. Relatively sort of light army, but yeah, that's them. Over here in Scalabis, we have a diplomat, Sagavax. I'd get him moving in this sort of direction to speak to the, these two people. That's what I'd do. But anyway, Scalabis has a faction heir, two round shield cavalry, and then four skirmishers. That's interesting as well. Again, very light army, but that's all the Spanish armies. They're all pretty light in terms of the old weapon style. Um, Matuginus, the family member, along with two town militia, Scutarii, and skirmishers. That's in Carthago Noa. And in Oscar, there's a spy, which I'd be probably moving up north to keep an eye on the Gauls. 
alongside Lucho, two town militia, skirmishers, and brownfield cavalry. So what would I do first? Well, I think the obvious thing to do first is consolidate the Spanish peninsula, Iberia. You've got to get you've got to get the Gauls and the Carthaginians off your land. Now, once the Carthaginians are off your land, they won't be too much of a threat because they haven't got a settlement nearby, so they're unlikely to come back. But in Cordoba, they have a decent army. I say decent, it's what, three, six, seven units. Seven units. So I'd probably get the guys from Scalabis down here, get the guys from Carthago Noa down here. Get those two to focus on Cordoba. You might have to buy a couple of mercenaries on the way. Spanish mercenaries are decent. And then you should be able to take Cordoba combined with the two garrisons of these two settlements. The same sort of applies for Gaul. You need to kick Gaul off because you can't start expanding anywhere until your homeland is secure, right? So get the troops from Oscar and Asturica over to Numantia and sort that out. Now the thing I find annoying about Spain and conquering Spain is there's actually a deceptively large distance between all these settlements. It's only, what, six settlements in quite a large area. If you compare it to sort of Greece, there's loads of settlements in a very small area. But it's slightly annoying and it takes a long time to get troops from Asturica, particularly because it's a mountainous region. It's a really horrible settlement in my opinion horseback it takes what well that only takes three no three four turns and it'll be five by the time you put it under siege so you know and if it's infantry that you're bringing over that'll take even longer one two three four probably about six turns once you get it under siege so no no so you know that's something to consider it's going to take a little while so you might want to build up army to, to take that but i would swiftly go for new mantia and cordova that's what i'd do now once you do that you have a kind of option now you could expand south and go through North Africa. I wouldn't recommend it, it's totally pointless. The Numidians aren't a threat to you, they're a pretty terrible faction. You could take Tinji pretty easily, but what's the point? What's the point of expanding over such a huge mass of land where, for nothing really? This land is relatively poor, it's not valuable, and it's such a large distance, it takes you so long, it's just not worth it. So I wouldn't conquer North Africa straight away. Now, another person would say, okay, go up and face Gaul. And you'll face Gaul, you can take out Narbo, Martis and Lebanon pretty quickly, bear in mind the Julia are pressuring them from this side, so they'll put all their troops over here. You can easily take Lebanon, Narbo, Martis, Alessia, Lugdon and Basilia, really easily, pretty much. And you've got a good stronghold. And then the Julia will come over this way, you'll come over this way, and you'll sort of meet in the middle. Now, you could do that. That is a relatively generic way of playing it, but I'm not a generic player, I would say. What I would do, once I secure the peninsula, is get a boat and sort of wait. By the time that's happened, the Julia are going to be full in war with Gaul. They initiate war with Gaul pretty quickly. And they'll start expanding. And they'll start moving their troops over to Mediolanum and Lugdunum and all that. And they'll start moving up north, leaving settlements like Aretium and Araminum completely unguarded. What I would do, maybe others wouldn't recommend it, is I'd get a boat strike Aretium and Araminum quickly, take their two most valuable settlements off them. Bear in mind, these settlements aren't valuable. These are the valuable settlements. Take their two most valuable settlements and strike them from behind where they're not expecting it. That's what I'd do. But you could do the traditional way and take a long time. But if you take so long in conquering all of what is modern-day France, by the time you reach the Julia, they're going to be very, very strong. Whereas if you launch a surprise attack on them, you can take two settlements quickly, and also they haven't expanded large enough, so they, they're not that strong. They haven't got loads and loads of armies. That's personally what I would do, but you could do it either way. You could do it either way. So that's fine. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I can say about strategy. You basically want to be expanding north or east anyway, so you're sort of expanding in this direction. The Julii and the Gauls are going to be your main enemy in the early game. That's what I would predict, personally. Now, let's have a look at the buildings to end this thing off. That's the wrong button. Yeah, whenever we look at the Spanish buildings, most of them are relatively generic barbarian buildings. Um, so, like this. So, these are the buildings. I'll scroll down slowly. You've probably seen them all before as barbarian factions. The temples are what are interesting. There's four different religions. The religions are Tutardis. Tutar I don't know how to say the name, I'm sorry. Epona, Abnoba, and Isis. Essus? Probably Essus, thinking about it. Now, I don't know if this is a glitch or... Temple of... Temple of Horse? Right, I seem to have come across a very odd glitch. I don't know what this is. Very fascinating. 
I've you know I've not got any mods downloading or anything, so I have no idea what this is. But we've got the four temples, and then this temple of Epona just randomly goes up to the temple of horse. Awesome temple. What? Temple of horse, awesome temple. Okay, so yeah, this I've done a little bit of research. This is a very odd glitch bug. I'm not really sure what it is, but basically there are four different religions, but this one goes up to Temple of Horse Awesome Temple and Temple of Horse Pantheon. And so Epona is the goddess, I think, uh, the yeah, goddess of horses. So I think what this is, after I've done a little bit of research, is, yeah, this is, it's very odd. If you are the Julii and you take Spain, for some reason I think you can get up to level 5 Temple of Horse or Temple of Epona. I don't know why, I don't know if that's a glitch, but I think it is intentional. For some reason you can get up to level 5, which means you get even more 5 plus experience to troops here. But it's not meant to show up if you're Spain, it's meant to show up if you're the Julii and you take a Spanish settlement, I think. So. It, yeah, it's a little bit of a glitch. It's not meant to be there. We'll kind of ignore it, but I've looked on the internet. Quite a few people have seen a similar thing. It's not meant to be there. You can get rid of it on the text files, but it's not worth it, in my opinion. So, we'll focus on the four that actually properly are Spanish temples, shall we? So, first of all, the Sacred Circle, the highest level of Tutatis. I don't know how to say the name, I'm sorry. 15% public order bonus, light weapons upgraded by plus one and plus two experience bonus, so pretty good, I would say a solid religion right there, you've got experience and light weapons, and bear in mind they're all light weapons in Spanish, that's pretty good, and a public order bonus, this is a more military minded um, religion of course. Now Epona, the horse goddess who's glitchy as hell, public order bonus of 15% again, this is more experience, a plus three experience bonus is really good, it's pretty, pretty decent, so you know, if you get these troops trained, if you have multiple religions, across settlements, then you can train some really good troops up, I have to admit. And in Sacred Circle of Abnoba, plus three on the missile weapons, that's really good if you have skirmishers and the um, Spanish mercenaries and all the slingers and all that, there's quite a lot of missile troops, short range missile troops, if you upgrade the missile weapons by plus three, you've really got a strong troop there, quite a dangerous troop I would say. And finally, Sacred Circle of Essence is more public order bonus, but it also enables the training of naked fanatics and bull warriors. So that's something to consider. So yeah, very odd, odd thing right there. But yeah, whatever. Okay, that you know that was a very weird thing how the um, temple showed up when they shouldn't have. But it's it's all good. So yeah, that is basically my faction guide for Spain. I hope it's been useful, and I'll be back with more very very soon. So thank you very much, and I'll see you around.